It's no secret that I'm a fan of the Muscleboro hat by Isolde Teague. But like a lot of other people, I had a really hard time with the casts on at first. That is until I found the crochet pinhole cast on. To me, this one is the fastest and the easiest and you can get started right away with your Muscleboro hat. I'm gonna show you how to do it plus how to get set up for the first row of the pattern. So let's get right to it. For the crochet pinhole cast on, you're gonna need a few things. You're of course gonna need your yarn, whatever yarn you're using for the hat, and the needles that go with that. I'm using fingering weight and size US2 needles. Then you're going to need a crochet hook that sort of coordinates with the needle size that you're using. If in doubt, go smaller. You just don't wanna make too big of stitches for the needle size that you're going to use. So my needles are 2.75 millimeters and my crochet hook hook is a C, which is also 2.75 millimeters. With fingering weight, I've also found that I can actually just use these little fix-it tools and that works just fine as well. But of course, if you're using a larger yarn, you'll need a larger crochet hook. Last thing is you just need two stitch markers. This is part of the pattern, so make sure you have those on hand. No matter what size you're making or what size yarn you're using, all of the Muscle Burl hats start the same with eight stitches. And since this is a paid for pattern, I am only going to be talking about the cast on setup. I am not gonna be going beyond that and I will have Isolde's pattern linked down below. To begin, just let out some yarn um, from your ball. I actually switched over here to a little bit of a darker purple yarn. That lighter one wasn't showing up that well against the white background. So I like to have my tail over with my dominant hand and the uh, yarn coming from the ball over with my non-dominant hand. There is going to be a left-handed tutorial that is linked down below in the description box that where I just reverse mirror everything. So if you're a lefty, I would recommend watching that one. And I will be saying dominant and non-dominant hand to keep things clear. So we're gonna start with a magic ring. A magic ring is a way that a lot of crocheted things are started in a circle. I'm going to go over it briefly here and show you how to do it. Um, you really just need a regular magic ring, not a double magic ring, although I will link my tutorials to both the magic ring and the double magic ring down below if you want to see it in a bit more detail. So I like to think of a magic ring as a knot that I don't completely tie. So take the tail in one hand and the uh, yarn coming from the ball in the other hand, take the tail underneath and over to make a knot. So basically you have switched sides here. I've made a knot that I am not going to tie. I'm just gonna leave it down here. My tail is now coming out to my non-dominant hand and my working yarn is now here with my dominant hand, which is great because I'm about to grab my crochet hook with my dominant hand and start using this yarn. I like to rotate my magic circle on its side. So now I've got the tail yarn coming down towards me and my working yarn away from me. That's just the magic circle part or magic ring as it's sometimes called. Now we're gonna actually get into making some stitches. So pick up your crochet hook and we're gonna dive right down into that circle to grab our working yarn and we're gonna make one slip knot. This is just one stitch to get us started and then we'll actually pick the thing up off the table. So. Take your crochet hook, dive in underneath the circle, scoop your working yarn and pull it up so that you have a loop there. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through the loop. Okay, so I'm gonna pick it up and bring it a little bit closer now and maybe we'll let the ambulance go by. Welcome to New York City, everybody. Okay, so I've got one stitch here on my hook and I'm going to tighten up this magic ring before I go any further. So that just means I'm gonna grab the tail, I'm gonna pull on it, I'm gonna kinda hold my stitch with my thumb and pull and let the circle just get a little bit smaller. I don't want it to close all the way, I just want it to get small enough that it's a little more manageable. Something about like, I don't know, a little bigger than a quarter is perfect. Um, what other references can I make? About the size of a small strawberry, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of something more universal than a quarter, but 
I think you got the, the picture. So we've got just the one stitch on the needle and we need to make a total of eight. And stitches two through eight are all made the same. So just to show you how I'm set up, I've got my crochet hook in my dominant hand and now I've got my working yarn in my left hand, I'm sorry, my non-dominant hand, um, set up how I would be crocheting. So to make another stitch, we're gonna dive right into the center of that circle, grab the working yarn, and pull up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through just that newest loop that we made. Now I've got two stitches here on my hook. So we can make another stitch exactly the same, dive into the circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just the newest loop. If you look closely here, these kind of even look like knit stitches, which is pretty, pretty cool. So I'm just gonna keep repeating that till I have eight stitches here on my hook. So diving in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just the latest loop. Dive in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just the latest one. And you can stop and make the circle a little bit smaller again if you want to, just to make it a little easier to manage. I've got five, so I need three more. So dive in, yarn over, pull through, dive in, yarn over, pull through. If you need to see this, any of this again, of course you can rewind. You can also use the YouTube settings to slow things down. So we should have eight lovely stitches here on the crochet hook. And the next step is to get them on to the knitting needle. So bring your needles into the picture and just pick up one of them. We're just gonna need one as we transfer things over and then we have one more little setup thing to do that involves your stitch markers. So if you take a closer look here at all of these stitches, it's a little hard to tell while they're on the crochet hook. Hang on. But they are actually all open and oriented in a way that is not conducive to knitting. Now, normally if we were doing like a plain knit row, it wouldn't really matter because we could just knit all these stitches through the back loop. But the very first row in the Muscleboro hat involves something else where we need our stitches to be correctly oriented. So I'm gonna show you how to orient the stitches correctly on the second pass. For the first pass, we are just gonna simply slip all of our stitches one at a time over to our knitting needle. So crochet hook is still in the dominant hand, one knitting needle is in the non-dominant hand, and just one at a time, we are going to very carefully transfer each stitch onto the knitting needle. I'm not doing anything special, I'm just inserting um, into the stitch, and sliding it over without changing anything about it. So just one at a time, slide each one over like so. Then you can get rid of your crochet hook. I know all of our knitters are going to be so happy <laughs> about that. Go ahead and double check, make sure you still have those eight beautiful stitches. I know they're not on there the right way, but that's what we're going to fix next. So keep these stitches here, keep them in your non-dominant hand, and then grab those markers because we're gonna need to put them in next. This is in your pattern on how to place these, um, but I'm gonna show you how I do it here. It's the same thing, but I just think of it as a little bit different way. So in one pass, we are gonna transfer all the stitches again, orienting them the correct way and placing our two markers where they need to go. All right, so take a look at your stitches. We're gonna take our needle in our dominant hand and we're gonna come into the back of the stitch, like this, into the back. What that is going to do is it's going to change the orientation of the stitch to be the correct way on our needle. You can also flip these um, as you're transferring them off the crochet hook. I just find it's a little easier to do it this way. So I've got one flipped around. Here we go, I'm gonna get the other. Next one, so I'm coming from behind, like this. Let me show you what it looks like from the top. From behind, and through to the front. And see how it flips that stitch around, like that? Now that I've slipped two, 
I need to place a marker. Perfect, all right? Now we're gonna slip four, correcting them. So coming in from the back, one, two, three, four. We're gonna place another marker. And now our last two. One and two. And look at that, we're back to where our working yarn is. We have our two markers placed. The last thing we need to do is get this set up for magic loop and of course, close that gap. So slide your stitches down to the cord. It's a little finicky to work with this few stitches, but once you get a few rounds in, I promise it's so much easier. Okay, so in between our two markers, we should have four stitches. We're gonna split two stitches to the right, two stitches to the left. In total, it's four stitches, you know, divided by a marker on each side. And that's where we're going to pull out the cord, split and pinch for magic loops. You can see I've got two stitches marker, two stitches, you can't because I'm holding it, but promise. Two stitches marker, two stitches. Go ahead and pull and slide so that you have your, uh, all your stitches are on the needles. Now, here is where we can find the tail. I'm holding the tail here, and you can pull to close it. You don't really need to worry about if it's closed up all the way right at this very moment because this is going to be available for you to pull tighter and to hold all of the time. After you get some knitting in, and I mean quite a bit of knitting, like after you do the crown and start doing your straight knitting, I would recommend coming and pulling this really tight and then weaving it in for a few stitches. Then I end up just leaving this tail inside my hat. I don't even cut it short. Um, that's why I feel like it's totally okay to do just a single magic ring, not a double magic ring here, because I just leave my tail long inside the layers of the hat. All right, so get your tail out of the way. Slide your stitches up. You should have your working yarn here in the back for magic loop. It does look a little bit crazy and messy now, but you should see four stitches on the front divided by a marker, four stitches on the back divided by a marker, and you are ready to work round one of the Muscle Burrow hat. I've worked about eight rows now, and you can see there's still a tiny little hole there at the top, but not to worry, you can just kind of pop the inside out here. Make sure to grab onto your tail and then you can pull that closed even more. And now you can barely see it. And again, once you've worked most of the increases and you're starting to work on just the plain part of the hat, I would give it another tug, weave it in for a few stitches and then just leave this tail inside the hat. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I'll have some other tutorials linked down below. And if you want to see more about all of these hats that I made, I recently recorded a video going through all of the details on how I make each of these hats, how I make them different with ribbing and different lengths and different colors. So I'll have that linked here so you can watch that one next in case you haven't seen it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.